And what's going on everyone? Thanks for tuning back into the channel today. Today I want to talk about somebody who's had a good influence on me uh, in my journey as far as biblical understanding, my journey as far as eschatology goes, and that's somebody whose name is Philip Kaiser. Philip Kaiser has recently, um, when I say recently, I think it was probably a couple years ago by now, uh, finished a sermon series on the book of Revelation. It was 118 parts, and he turns over every nook and cranny. He is really into um, a lot of details. He's pretty scholarly. He does quite a bit with the languages. And I don't agree with him on everything, but um, I, I would I would probably disagree with him on some symbolic stuff. I would take some things to be more symbolic. Uh, our hermeneutics a little bit different in certain areas. Um, but Kaiser has gained a lot of traction over the last little bit. And I think the main reason that Kaiser's gained so much traction is simply because his dealing with the resurrections. I think there are a growing number of scholars who are starting to see that, listen, there's some form of resurrection. Um, whatever you do with it, that points to first century or 8070. And some of those texts that are forcing that hand are, I think, Daniel 12, 2 specifically. And I would also throw in there Matthew 13. So one of the one of the parts that really was a stress for me is to say, all right, there's there's some kind of resurrection that's going on first century. And people like Kaiser because Kaiser posits a first century resurrection. But here's what's unique about Kaiser. Kaiser also posits a future bodily resurrection. So he's he's playing with two bodily resurrections. OK, so he's going to say there is a bodily resurrection in AD 70. And he's going to claim that there is a bodily resurrection in mine and your future. So you essentially, his construct is to work on what's known as the barley harvest and the wheat harvest. So he would say that the first resurrection happens in two different parts. So Matthew 27, 53 to 54, which admittedly is a passage that I have a lot of study and work to do on. I have a lot of questions about Matthew 27, <laughs> 53 and 54. And that's when... Uh, Christ came out of the grave and others came out of the grave and, and walked around and those things. I want to know, okay, number one, who was it? Did they die? Things like that. But skip that on my thoughts for Matthew 27 for now. Kaiser posits that the first resurrection happened in two parts. So this Matthew 27, 53, 54 was the first part. And then the rest of the barley harvest happened 80, 70. And then in our future, you'll have the wheat and the tear uh, harvest as well. Now, one part where I consider Kaiser inconsistent is the end of the age. That's in that because Matthew 13 posits that the parable of the wheat and the tares, whatever that resurrection is, happens at the end of the age, which obviously you guys know if you follow this channel for any amount of time, I consider to be the end of the old covenant age. But people like Kaiser because he deals with passages that include the word mellow. Now, there are mellow passages I think he's inconsistent on, but passages such as uh, Acts 24, where Paul says that there was about to be mellow, a resurrection of the dead. With Kaiser's interpretation, he can say, you know what, there is about to be a resurrection of the dead because he posits a bodily resurrection uh, in AD 70. Now, I'm completely against that and to where I'm at right now. I don't think there was a bodily resurrection in AD 70. I think the fullness of the resurrection that happened in AD 70 was um, that the living saints were covenantally brought fully back into the presence of God and that those in Hades, uh, which is James Jordan's view, uh, went back into the presence of God at that time. So in AD 70, I would posit like Daniel 12, 13, where it says, you, Daniel, will sleep um, with your fathers in the dust of the earth and will rise to your inheritance at the end of the days. So Kaiser would say that there was a physical bodily resurrection that happened there in AD 70, which it, it solves all the mellow issues that come together with the resurrection because people want to claim, all right, the, the resurrection's physical and bodily and Kaiser helps them to solve that issue. Now, I think his inconsistency comes when he starts to, to try to tie some of those passages like Matthew 13 to our future. So I disagree with him on nature of the resurrection, but Kaiser helped me to see the timing of the resurrection. And honestly, I probably got through into Kaiser a little bit too early in my journey. Um, I don't know that I was ready for that yet, but I somebody in some forum somewhere had, uh, had told me about his stuff. 
and I would encourage you to go listen to it. I, I listen to, I, I'm serious. I probably listened to three to 500 hours of this guy. And I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was closer to 500. When I study somebody, I want to know what they think about just about every passage that has to do with, you know, what I'm studying them on. So I, I can remember going back and listening to Kaiser teach Acts chapter one in 19, I think it was from 1997. So somewhere on one of his websites, um, biblical blueprints, you type in biblical blueprints and you'll get his stuff, Philip Kaiser, biblical blueprints, and then his revelation series, 118 sermons that's on there. But I can remember hearing, and in, in, I think it was 97, hearing Kaiser teach about Acts chapter 1, 9 to 11. Um, you'll see him come in like manner. And, and back then he said, okay, that's in our future. He would posit Acts 1 in our future. But over the past 20 years or so, he's, he's changed his mind. And whenever I heard him speak on that, I don't remember if it was in the Revelation series or in a different uh, lesson that he gave. But he now posits Acts 1, 9 to 11 in 87. So he's... He, he's made some changes and I think that's encouraging to see and that's what encourages me about people like Gary DeMar or somebody like that that these guys have been studying so long but they're willing to say all right if the text demands a paradigm shift then the paradigm has to shift so Kaiser will take passages like um, the Acts 24 he'll take things like um, Daniel 12 and he relieves the tension on that but he, he gets to claim that he's still inside of what we know as orthodoxy because even though he disagrees uh, with the creeds and the fact of 8070 bodily resurrection, he still posits a future resurrection. So he doesn't take as much heat as some other people. Now, in, in kind, I, I do think that, that Kaiser's a little more generous to people like me um, and where I'm at. And I appreciate that. So, you know, that that helps to return the generosity back. But at the same time, you, you still have to say, all right, man, there's some inconsistency here because Kaiser would still claim to be post-millennial. So Kaiser believes that there will be a day uh, when everyone will be converted. And he thinks it's possible that all the Jews will be converted like at one time. So he's looking for a day when every single person will be converted. And I think this is a misuse of certain passages that post-millennials um, do. But I want to highlight a, a point and a problem that I think Kaiser tries to deal with. If you'll go listen to him in Revelation 20, when it says the saints were surrounded by the camp, uh, Gog and Magog, he makes a point, and this is interesting. Uh, he makes a point that it says they came up on the breath of the earth. He, he takes this to be those who were under the earth. So not even humans, but somebody demonic underneath that comes and surrounds the camp. In our future, that's how he would get around the final apostasy. And if you're postmillennial watching this, or, or you're familiar with postmillennialism, you, you realize they say, "All right, the Earth's moving towards this this Christianization of it. How then, at the very end, can there be this falling away?" Which I would posit that falling away in the first century in AD seventy, um, well before AD seventy, but in the first century. Kaiser would say that, no, this isn't talking about people who are on the earth. This is talking about those who are dead and they come back on the earth and surround the saints. So I, I would just point out inconsistencies with things like that. I would also point out an inconsistency with Kaiser on his use of mellow, specifically Hebrews 13, 14, where it says here, speaking of Jerusalem, we have no continuing city, but we seek the one mellow about to come. If you're going to pause it, mellow is about to in all these other places like when John the Baptist said it in Matthew 3, 7, and 8, um, that the wrath was about to come. Who warned you to flee from the mellow, the wrath about to come? Uh, and all those other spots. You're going to have to do it with the New Jerusalem, too. Kaiser takes a hyper-literal view on the New Jerusalem. So, meaning that he thinks this is a city um, that's in the sky, in heaven, that uh, has these physical dimensions and he takes those dimensions to be literal, to be physical and a certain allotment of space for each person. And eventually it'll come down and it'll be the, the new world and the inheritance. And I could not disagree more with that. And I think that's a principle of hermeneutics, the way that we understand the, the new Jerusalem as the city or the dwelling place of God. And I think that was inherited at 8070. So in just thinking about some of those differences that go along with that, kind of connecting some of the things from resurrection and New Jerusalem back together. 
some things that I'm working through and things that Kaiser has made me think about. Number one, okay, if Daniel was told that he would rise to his inheritance at the end of the days, I would, number one, posit that in eighty seventy. okay? I don't know what to do with Matthew 27, 53 and 54. Who came, who was it that, that came up out of the graves at that time and walked around, okay? Now, if you say it was the Old Covenant saints, then I would ask the question, well, who in Hebrews 11 then, why is he listing all the Old Covenant saints and saying that they were desiring still to inherit the, the city? Uh, Hebrews 11, I think it's like six to eight when it says Abraham was looking for a heavenly city that had uh, foundations whose builder and maker was God. Well, why were they still looking for that heavenly city? Like, I mean, you, you've got some things that you've got to work through there. So in thinking about Kaiser's thoughts, I like what he's trying to do, but I don't agree with him on his double um, two-part first resurrection, future resurrection. Okay, so I would disagree with him now in the fact to say, all right, regeneration happened. Those saints uh, were born again of the Spirit in the first century who were alive. Okay, they didn't receive, whether living or dead, they did not receive the fullness of the inheritance until AD 70. Okay, so covenantally, the living were restored. And then Daniel 12, 13, he rose along with the other old covenant saints to their inheritance, uh, the dwelling place of God at the end of the days. I would disagree with him once there. But let me make a note here about something that Kaiser helped me with tremendously. This has been one of the biggest apologetic issues. And, you know, I don't know who watches the channel and who doesn't watch the channel as far as where you're at on um, things like charismatic gifts and stuff. But Kaiser did something uh, in, with his understanding of that the end of the charismatic gifts were tied to Daniel's 70 weeks. Now, Kaiser does something that I disagree with, and I know some of you guys watching the channel, you're for this view. They, they want to say that Daniel's 70 weeks end in 73. So Kaiser would say that the sealing up of vision and prophecy, that that happened in the first century. And if, hang on a second. This is the book that Kaiser wrote, and it's called The Canon of Scripture. And if you'll take it and just read this, and you'll see some really good points, I think, that can be made on the sealing up of vision and prophecy. Now, where I would differ with Kaiser on it is, he says that the giving of vision and prophecy, being that the giving of it was sealed up inside of Daniel's 70 weeks that ended in 73 AD. I would say that the prophecy was fulfilled by that time, not just the ending of the giving it, but the fulfillment of it, Luke 21, 22. These are the days of vengeance when all things written would be fulfilled to seal up vision and prophecy, Daniel 9, 24. So I disagree with him there, but he's the one that got me thinking on that train. He's the one that really helped me see, if you're going to say we're in the last days still, you have to say that the gifts are still in play. I don't see a way around that. And then likewise, I don't. I have a hard time seeing the consistency of preterists who say, no, the, these charismatic gifts are still in play. I'm like, I, just, like, I don't see it. So there's, I don't know how you harmonize that. All right, let me explain about his 70 weeks view. He thinks that it, when it says in Daniel chapter 9, that the final week would be 67 to 73 roughly that range. In the middle of the week, he brings an end to sacrifice and offering. He thinks that's the destruction of the temple in AD 70. Posits that and then continues it on out until the city was destroyed in the year 73. Where I'm at right now, I, th I think this thing ends in 70. I think that's the end of the 70 weeks as to where I'm at now. Now, I have a lot of study and I have to do. Um, it's funny, too, because the more you study the Bible, and I know you guys and, and girls watching this feel this, the more you study the Bible, the more you have questions. And 
Kaiser is one that just helped me ask uh, just a trillion questions. He, he just he spurred this conversation along for me. He does things like with the with the horsemen, the four horsemen in Revelation six. He does things like make those the emperors, the Roman emperors, and carries that out all the way up until 70 AD. I'm not there, um, but it is food for thought. And he goes over all that in his Revelation study series. So things I like about Kaiser, just to recap, he made us think about Mello. Okay. He made us think about the timing of the resurrection. Now, I disagree with him on the nature of the resurrection, but he helped us think about the timing of the resurrection. He helped us deal with the charismatic gifts and he didn't skip anything whenever he went through the book of Revelation. And just for that alone, I think that 118 set sermon series is worth you going and listening to. You say, man, that's going to take me a long time. Yeah, but there's, there are things that you're going to glean from it, even if you don't agree with him on every point, just like I don't. You're going to be able to see uh, his hermeneutic. And for me, it, it helps me to see where I think he got it wrong like on the New Jerusalem and, and things like that, taking it more of a uh, literal structure when he should have took it symbolically and timed the fullness of it coming down in 8070. But examine his work because he's somebody that you're going to hear a lot about. Uh, he's His work's not going anywhere. It's only going to get more popular, especially in post-millennial camps because these guys know, listen, you start talking about pre-mill, amill, post-mill, full preterists, these post-millennials, more than the other two camps, know, man, really what we're doing, we're putting more stuff in the past. And when you start trying to make those um, abomination of desolation things and the first century, this generation stuff and all of the about to's, you really start feeling the tension whenever you start positing stuff that needs to be taken in the past and you start putting in the future. And the resurrection is the biggest colliding point. And that's where Kaiser is trying to help. There are so many people who are saying, yeah, man, it seems like there's something in the first century that had to do with the resurrection. And Kaiser is probably going to be a guy that'll help kind of transition some folks into start thinking that way. So that's some of my thoughts on Kaiser. I like him. I think he needs to be studied. And check him out. Um, Biblical Blueprints, type his name in. You can find all of his stuff there and just uh, chart him from that course. He's got a lot of stuff on Sermon Audio. You can type his name in Sermon Audio and find him there. Like and subscribe to the channel down below. Thanks for tuning in today. And we'll try to give some more thoughts on some other folks coming soon. Take care.